Valve might have just shown us an early model from Half-Life 3. Right now, Valve is working on HLX. A few of those things include voxel-based destruction, Anim Graph 2, a new gore system, a return to Zen, and the iconic HEV suit. With the anniversary update for Half-Life 2, Valve showed off something new that we need to talk about. Now, right away, if you don't want to get spoiled, a video about the next Half-Life may not be for you. That is because at the very end of Half-Life Alex, Valve already confirmed they are returning to Gordon's story. The entire ending was Eli Vance telling Gordon that they need to find Alex and take down the G-Man after she got put into stasis. So we don't need to go through hoops just to to act like a new Half-Life is real, because Valve already teased that it is. Valve even has confirmed this scene is an actual retcon from Episode 2, teasing the continuation of the Half-Life series. Jay Pinkerton mentioned how they needed an idea that was meaningful to the player and felt essential to Half-Life, so they came up with this new idea of going to the Episode 2 ending. That on January 21st, 2019, they then pitched the idea. Keep in mind, this is a room of 80 people, many of whom worked on the original two Half-Life games, and the three of us who didn't. We were about to pitch them a retcon of the thing they made 10 years ago. Yes, we were stressed about it, explaining how they have a very crisp problem. To where the Alex team had embraced Eli's resurrection, but no one knew if Newell would be on board with such a radical retcon, which Gabe Newell approved that Eli Vance can live, which meant that the team would need new art and development resources, all for a post end credit surprise to tease the continuation of the series post Alex. Now, why this is important is because four years after the release of Half-Life Alex, we got the Half-Life 2 anniversary update, and in that documentary, Gaben mentions the ending of Half-Life Alex, crediting the people involved Involved in that decision. The ending of Half-Life Alex is somewhat a self-critical realization, so it, that was super satisfying and all credit to the, to, to the people who are specifically involved in that decision and those sets of designs. The thing I find interesting is the fact Gabe doesn't mention a single thing about Half-Life Alex other than the design of the ending, which we know is a straight up teaser for what's next in the series. Gabe even gives his own explanation of what the Half-Life series is, saying how it's all about innovation. I think that, that Half-Life represents a tool we have and promises made to customers to capitalize on innovation and opportunities to build game experiences that haven't been involved previously. And I think that there are no shortage of those opportunities facing us uh, as an industry right now. The thing is, he specifically mentions how there is no shortage of those opportunities facing us as an industry right now. That wasn't it though, as Valve even continued that innovation for future Half-Life games will be an interesting challenge moving forward. It was easy to think about VR being a vehicle for Half-Life because that was a big technological innovation and kind of a core reason for that product's existence. And I think like one of the things we have internally tended to attach to the Half-Life IP is innovation. Gameplay innovation is oftentimes enabled by a technological innovation. Clearly there was a ton in Half-Life 1 and 2. Uh, and so yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge moving forward to like think about what that means for future Half-Life stuff for sure. We know they have canceled many versions of Half-Life 3 in the past because the Source 2 engine wasn't ready. But now that it is 10 years later, the Source 2 engine is not what it used to be. Just check out what they were able to do with Train. Valve said they were moving on to a new big project after Half-Life Alex that was going to be even bigger, while privately the team hoped the next big thing was indeed a full-scale Half-Life game built not for VR. In 2021, Gabe Newell said Alex was great to be back doing single player games. That created a lot of momentum inside of the company to do more of that. But when you actually look at the list of Valve games released since then, the only single player game was Aperture's Desk Job, which is really just a tech demo for the Steam Deck. So it seems like we have to wait until Valve is ready to reveal what is next. Like what are they planning with the unnamed scientist that they are keeping private for the reason that it will give them another character to use in Half-Life 3. Valve has confirmed they are not scared of Half-Life anymore, which should be clear from their huge anniversary updates. We could look at strings which directly mention HLX in the Source 2 files, like the new animation system, the new destructible parts, files relating to Zen, voxel-based destruction, and so much more which is now popping up. Or what about the fact that Valve is even hiring a bunch of employees lately? 
we know that they have started voice recordings and the amount of HLX information we keep getting is stacking up. You should also take note of the new reflective, flammable materials that were just added, plus the new wetness layers for Hammer, which Valve is now showing off all throughout Train. It's very clear Valve is going all out right now and the question should no longer be is Half-Life 3 or HLX real? But when will HLX be revealed? With the new anniversary update, Valve released a bunch of new wallpapers. The thing is, these aren't the same artworks from 20 years ago. Valve artists actually recreated them. Valve artist Dobby says, For the 20th anniversary of Half-Life 2, I tried to make new art in the same style as my old art. That meant going back to old methods and deliberately ignoring all the stuff I've learned in the last 20 years. Much of the art seems like it could be the original promo art. That is until you look at this new image of Gordon Freeman with Alex, while he is holding the gravity gun. It's not just any gravity gun, or at least not the gravity gun from Half-Life 2. Just look at how high quality this new model is. You might just say, well this is an artwork, it's not a model. But the artist even confirmed in a reply that it is. Not only 2D. I always start with a rough 3D model for these and then paint over it in Photoshop. So where did this gravity gun model come from? There was not a single gravity gun throughout Half-Life Alex, so the last time Valve would have publicly made one would have been for Half-Life 2 and the episodes, but that is clearly not what we are seeing right here. So did Valve make a gravity gun model for this specific artwork, or are they maybe using an early HLX model? Of course, Valve won't just say they are showing Half-Life 3 right in our faces, but it is something to definitely pay attention to in this new artwork. I would like to think I'm just being crazy and the artist is just really that good, but over 5,000 people also thought the same thing. So Valve, where did this high quality gravity gun come from? We know we will get some sort of Half-Life content in 2025. Valve confirmed that in 2025 they will be coming out with a new Raising the Bar. Don't expect this new book to be anything for Half-Life 3, as this new edition concludes the Half-Life 2 development story, with never-before-seen concept art from Episode 1, Episode 2, along with new ideas and experiments for the third episode that never came to be. But the fact that Valve confirmed it will arrive in 2025 is a sign Valve isn't just wiping their hands from the Half-Life series after the anniversary update. It should be clear that there is a new Half-Life in the works, it's just a matter of time until Valve reveals it to us. Does Valve finally have enough innovation for Half-Life 3 after they've already cancelled it plenty of times? While going through the newly added Half-Life 2 developer commentary, I noticed something interesting that while talking about the suppression device, they hint that we could see it become functional in a future Half-Life game. It's hard to feel good about spending lots of time on a single moment in the game, so we decided our efforts were better spent elsewhere and moved on. Sorry. Perhaps we'll solve the design conundrum of the mortar in a future installment of the Half-Life series. So overall, going by everything we know so far, Gordon Freeman will be returning with his crowbar and HEV suit, Zen and its creatures will be involved, there is a destructible body part system, an environment with voxel-based destruction, procedural generation, a brand new animation system, plus a lot more that Valve is hiding from us. Seeing as most Half-Life fans have been waiting on what's next in the storyline for two decades now, there is no point to rush Valve. We know they are working on something, so having to wait an extra one or two years isn't much if you already had to wait 20. Make sure you subscribe right now so you don't miss what Valve is planning next.